The Atlanti project was established at the end of 2010 and was dedicated to create a mobile localization system to integrate with the underwater communication units made by Ocean Reef. It was immediately clear that one of the main issues was to establish a test place with the possibility of checking the errors of the prototype units. The vision was to create a testing system, including an underwater platform with a precise geometric design to be installed at a depth no deeper than 10 meters. The choice was a small village roughly 70 kilometers from Genoa, Italy. Nali, a beautiful tourist town in a bay well protected by the southern winds, was a prime choice due to the sea having a variety of conditions, being quite deep, and having a sand bottom just in from the beach. The location needed to be fairly close to the shoreline. Cabling from the platform to a shelter was used to install all measuring systems, computers, audio and video surface communication systems, and a high-speed internet connection to network the underwater platform with the R&D office of Ocean Reef. Onshore, an old storage room on the beach located under the scenic street facing the sea would be used as a control center. The platform was designed considering several aspects. Most importantly, the size and portability of the platform. A 3x3 three three meter area separated into two segments was constructed to allow easy installation and handling by the divers without any special equipment. A combination of aluminum and plastic was chosen to have durability, zero buoyancy, excellent flexibility and high strength. To fix the platform to the seafloor, custom-made anchors were used and driven into the sand by divers. These anchors were then fixed to the platform frame using steel connections, screws, and bolts. The platform panels were held in place by the frame and secured using screws to complete the platform system. On these panels, a special measurement system was laid out to conduct various tests. White was chosen as the background so that it was well identified from the surface. Two cables measuring 150 meters each were constructed with the same design of the Gamma Alpha Pro X divers unit made by Ocean Reef. These lines were buried underground in and above the water line. Both cables were utilized to test hardwired products and connect the platform directly to the control center. In this facility, the cables were connected to a Gamma Alpha unit, digital converter, ADSL line, and finally to a PC equipped with broadcast systems such as Skype and Ustream. A stand 1.5 meters high was installed in proximity to the platform to hold underwater video systems. The two cables ran were used to operate a video signal using an underwater camera and audio utilizing hardwired communication units such as the Alpha Pro X Divers underwater unit or GSM Cube 3 connected to a diver. On July 16th, two divers and three surface supporters installed the full system. It took nearly six hours under very bad weather conditions. But in the end, the platform was completed and fully operational. Three days later, a storm impacted the bay. Heavy surge began shaking the platform. The panels were inflating and deflating, even if at 7 meters depth. Although the storm passed with no damage to the platform or system and no video feed was lost, most of the sea life previously lingering nearby was no longer present. On July 21st, Maurizio De Vincenti, a volunteer diver, asked for the possibility to build a small artificial reef on the western side of the platform. Given the vision of the Atlanti project to involve everyone in this venture, permission was granted. Maurizio installed a number of rocks collected from nearby locations surrounding the platform. In some cases, even living stones were used. Additionally, a few ceramic pots were positioned so that sea life such as octopi could inhabit the reef comfortably. 
the Atlanti Project platform soon became home to many different species of sea life. Interestingly enough, one of the first unique visitors was a vibrant needlefish. On July 25th, for the first time ever, the first underwater audio and video communication between the United States and Holland were conducted via Skype. From the platform, the divers were able to communicate and see personnel located at the Ocean Reef Factory in San Diego, California, and Ocean Reef, Netherlands, located in Amsterdam. This live interaction between multiple locations was one of the main goals of the project. It included the possibility to provide education from a live underwater feed and describe the functionality of the products and their applications. The platform was also used to make tutorial videos, filming for product training, education, and demonstrations showing sound propagation and directionality. This was made possible by installing various equipment on and around the platform, giving total support and supervision utilizing audio and video communications. It was soon apparent that this project and platform was an amazing meeting point for divers and snorkelers to view, learn, and connect with a vast amount of sea life and technology. The platform soon became an attraction amongst many visitors eager to see what was going on. Large schools of fish began congregating when feedings were conducted. Special plastic containers were used to assist in these feedings. Many snorkelers and divers began bringing food to the platform, and all feeding events were broadcasted during the day on Ocean Reef TV and on a local monitor being viewed by the tourists of Nali. This live virtual aquarium was a great attraction and was viewed constantly. Even with its great success, regular cleaning and maintenance was necessary to keep the platform running efficiently. To make this work, scooters were utilized to travel long distances and were parked under or attached to the platform while not in use. On August 3rd, the first international broadcast was organized. Sergio Gambarini, president of Ocean Reef, and Gabrielle Cuccia, chief engineer, conducted a dive and introduced worldwide the characteristics of the platform and the vision behind the Atlanti project. This broadcast utilized Ustream, an internet-based streaming program, and lasted approximately 20 minutes. The feed was also projected at Elite Diving Center in Amsterdam, Holland. The results and feedback of this project were excellent and was a clear representation of what was possible in the future. The hardwired point-to-point -point communication system was successfully tested and used to communicate worldwide, but even more was needed. On August 5th, a unique system was tested to create the ability to interact with additional divers utilizing wireless communication units. The R&D department of Ocean Reef then developed a prototype M101A unit and submerged at the platform while taking steps to contain the microphone in an air pocket with the idea of communicating with other divers from the surface via remote. The results were positive and the possibility for future products was further expanded. The initial project created many new developments and dreams. The platform was now not just an R&D location for measuring and testing, but a place from where it was possible to introduce and describe the great advantages of the Ocean Reef full face masks and underwater communications. Additionally, it became home base for exploring the Bay of Nali. The bay was not very attractive due to large amounts of pollution by local authorities with hopes of saving the shoreline. Thousands of tons of soil were thrown into the sea, making the sea bottom silty and filled with debris. This event made it hard for sea life to grow and flourish. As a direct result, a large invasion of algae has began to overtake the bay. On August 17th, the project team began conducting night dives and the realization of another great opportunity for development arose. The task was set to bring artificial light underwater. 
research began to choose different colors and types of light that would be installed at depth. The R&D department at Ocean Reef then modified light strings to be submerged and powered by low voltage power from the surface by a 150 meter long cable. The results were extraordinary. Not only were the light strings visible from the surface, but there was also a possibility to change the color of choice and witness the reaction of nearby sea life. This test was an exciting experience for divers and is a prelude to new upcoming projects in the summer of 2012. On September 3rd, a test was conducted and broadcasted live made by the University of Berlin. Four tests using three divers was conducted to check the different concentration capabilities of divers using an integrated diving mask versus the use of a conventional diving mask and regulator. The professor conducting this experiment believed that the use of an integrated diving mask does not promote an effect known as diver's dementia. This condition is said to be a reduction of the capability of focus due to the pressure caused by a conventional mask on different locations of the head. The tests conducted were quite humorous and another proof of how important of having an underwater base and the capability of live broadcasting. With summer coming to an end and large storms from the southwest expected to arrive in late October, it was soon time to complete the Atlantic project due to upcoming projects needing attention. The platform had become a nursery to newborn sea life and a great asset to Ocean Reef and its visitors. The final test was needed and a meeting between all major Ocean Reef area managers was completed. Managers from Scandinavia, France, Holland, Italy and Germany all gathered to dive the platform and got the chance to test, use and experiment all Ocean Reef technology and products. It is not known if another opportunity will arise in the future to continue this project. On September 29th, the platform was removed by Ocean Reef technicians and with great sadness to all of those involved with the project. The Atlante project was a complete success. It showed that divers with few tools, underwater communications, low costs, and efficient logistics were able to build a meeting point underwater from where it was possible to communicate, broadcast, educate, conduct all testing, and make the dream of the Atlante project come to life.